And then my grandma, she, um, I think as part of a result of Japanese colonization or occupation of China, she had to learn Japanese in school. So like she knows like the numbers, like Ichi Nisan. Oh, she's not like a weeb or anything like that. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Politically Asian Podcast. We're just two Asian American buds talking about politics and the Asian American community in hopes of getting more Asians to talk about politics. Today, we're coming at you live from Brooklyn, New York. My name is Aaron Yin. My pronouns are he, him, and you can find me on social media at Aaron Flarin. That's A-A-R-O-N-F-L-A-R-I-N. And my co-host, Hey, my name is Jerry Lim. My pronouns are they, them. And you can find me across the internet at Jerryaki. That's G-E-R-R-I-E-Y-A-K-I. Um, yeah, I, f- I feel like it's been like a minute since we've we've done this. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I, I miss it. I missed it. It's, it's good to be rusty. back. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to set up the microphones again and the webcam. Mm-hmm. No, no, it's it's good to, I mean, I've we've talked before, you know, this recording, but it's good to, I guess, see you on the camera again and be doing all this. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So for the listeners, you know, normally this is the spot where we do hot take, hot pot. But this time and maybe in the future, we're trying a new segment temporarily called Practice What You Preach. Um, the idea behind this, like I was the one who suggested this, but it's that, you know, Jerry and I, we, we talk a lot about politics, but I think it's also important to do the, the, you know, the praxis part, right? Doing things in real life and practice, whatever big or small thing that may be, whether it's like an event you went to or like an update on someone we work with or just something action oriented. So maybe our listeners like they talk about politics, but they also do stuff. Um, <laughs> that, <laughs> that was like the idea in my head. Cause you know, there are so many, like, like there are so many podcasts already, even Asian politics related ones that, you know, talk a lot about politics, but don't really get involved with stuff. And I'm like, okay, I think that's one way we can kind of be different is by okay. actually like telling people about our real life stuff that we do and, and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like that's yeah. fair. Um, you know, one thing that was kind of hard about Hot Take Hot Pot was like, just like thinking so hard, which, you know, I felt like I was like a philosophy major. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, and at a certain point, it started to feel like homework. But like, as I was like, tr- uh, filling out like what, you know, just like taking notes on what I was going to say, like, I was like, oh, sh- this is actually like, also homework in a way but like it's 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 a little better so yeah it's a little better um yeah and okay so you know being the one who suggested all this i'm like i have to be the one who starts it um (laughs) so so my update for this week is um i started taking um chinese classes again yay Um, yeah and um but specifically with a lot of the um former uh jingfang uh restaurant workers that i organize with so it's a class at the chinese staff and workers association it's a very informal class there's like a volunteer teacher and it's a whole bunch of the workers plus like me and plus a few other people Mm -hmm. and we're all just like talking in chinese reading some articles related to like workers organizing whether that's in the form of like a dense kind of article or like a you know nice little allegory story Mm -hmm. um but yeah, it's been, it, we just started, I just went last week Okay. and I would say it's really funny being in a class with like lots of really old people and really lo- lots of young people. I've never had that in my life, but it's, yeah, it's great to have another way to like, you know, really know the workers and really know the people you're organizing with beyond like a superficial level. That's really interesting that it's, um, also older people i guess like i was kind of under the assumption like when i hear like oh like this asian person doesn't know how to speak you know their their ancestral tongue i kind of always assume it's a younger person so it's interesting to hear that there are older people in your class oh Oh, i see okay 
they they know how to speak Chinese really well. They're very okay. Fluent. Okay. <laughs> this is okay. So yes. Uh, okay. Let me let me add. So a they're just hanging so, out. They're just hanging out. It's like it's like <laughs> well it's like hanging out. It is really really fun. I'll say that for me and you know other people who are not that good at Chinese, it's like a way to relearn it. And mm-hmm. for I say for like the workers, it's more like um, talking to them more about like organizing and other struggles it's almost like we're reading socialism text in chinese a little bit so it's more of like the cool. theory part of it um because like we do a lot of day-to-day stuff but it's like tying the struggles into like larger workers movements and other stuff so i say for them it's more just to hang out and learn more of the organizing aspect um a little mm-hmm. bit um in like a text kind of way because they do a lot of in real life stuff but yeah, their Chinese is really, really good already. <laughs> okay, I was about to, I was like, yeah. why? Yeah, okay, that's yeah. cool. What inspired you to yeah. What inspired you to do that? Um, yeah, just like uh, you know, I, I guess the group I'm with, like Youth Against Displacement, and also like Chinese staff, we always think about ways to organize better, like externally, like strategy wise, but also like how can we do better as a group? And there's always been like a little divide between like. You know, like the Jingfang workers or home care attendant workers who only speak Chinese. Yeah. And a lot of people like, you know, like I speak Chinese so I can talk with them, but some people don't. So we're trying to kind of bridge that language gap. We used to do English classes, but that didn't work out so well. So now we're doing the flip side where it's like, you know, like where we were having workers learn more English. Yeah. But now we're doing the flip where we're like, no, okay, no, let's just beef up our Chinese so we can okay. um, talk more. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. So it's Mandarin, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mandarin. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Neat. The, yeah. I mean, a downside is some of the workers mainly speak Cantonese, so there is a little bit of transition as well. Like, they know how to mm. speak both, but prefer one over the other. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, it's it's fun uh, so far. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. So, like, if if our listeners wanted, could they, like, come to this class and, like, at any proficiency level and join or... Is this like a cult, um, quiet thing? Secret, <laughs> oh, secret cult organizer. Cult? <laughs> secret cult organizer. Um, okay, unfortunately, is it, it is more the latter right now because it just started. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess anyone who's or- been organized or like honestly, like, yo, if you came out to the picket line, you could probably come to the class afterward. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Jerry, what's what's been up? What's uh What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I was I was originally going to be like, oh, I read this book, but then I was like, fuck, that's more thinking. Yeah. Um so I think um one thing that I've been I've been doing lately is like I'm trying to get to know my neighbors, which sounds like really oh. basic, I feel like, but like I'm I'm really like uh the 4th of July, um my partner and I just watched our fire the fireworks from our roof. And we did that last summer and like, it's just a really good way to meet the neighbors. Cause like we have a pretty good roof. So everyone goes to the rooftop on the 4th mm, of July. So we mm, got to meet everyone. Yeah. Um, and that was really good. Um, and I, you know, like obviously you can't just like go balls deep and be like, so what do you guys think about capitalism? You can't, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going <laughs> to, yeah. not going to go into the deep end, but like, you know, like we were just, we were just kind of like edging a little bit, like what? You know, like how much are you paying on your rent, and like Did you say how edging? long have you been? Yeah, like get, getting to the edge, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure, okay. Yeah, like okay, sure, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. And yeah, so we were, we were. I was just like kind of asking, like, hey, like, so how much, uh, how much are you paying on your lease? Like, what's your rent? Because like mm-hmm. ours went up like seven hundred, and like Whoa. some of the shit. Yeah, some of the shit in this building is like really stupid, like. The elevator like probably goes out every other like at least once every other month, which isn't mm. so bad. But when you're above like the third floor and like the stairs are like really narrow, it's a problem. Like, what if one of us broke our legs? Like, how would we, you know, yeah. how would we get out? Yeah. Whoa. Um, no. Wait. That's that's really really good. Actually, talking to your neighbor. I don't even talk to my neighbors, but my building's like really big. But that's like um. You're basically doing tenant organizing right now. That that's like the foundation yeah, of it. Put it really labels is. on it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, oh. no, it's it's just really yeah. good. And like, um, I know I I know my neighbors across the hall from me are mm-hmm. um, they're in the DSA. So oh, I know I know they're definitely familiar with like just like all that. And we we talk a little bit more about like a little bit more organizing based stuff. But beyond that, like it's just yeah. like. Well, oh, well like, damn, you know, they yeah, yeah, they should be helping you reduce that rent increase. That's are are you um 
uh wait you live your neighborhood's also crown heights right yes it is yeah um there's like crown heights tenants union like my partner's in there and like oh yeah you should join that or i can link you up after that um uh, my partner's actually writing a letter to her landlord about reducing the rent increase because yo this is happening like all over new york city right now yes so. wait i saw her instagram and she said she successfully negotiated it down true or yeah. false verify yeah uh i can double check but as far as i okay. understand <laughs> um I, the last time i talked with her about this she was sending the letter so i can double check but mm. yeah yo i think like getting to know your neighbors and then um you can form like a group chat and then like write a letter because this is getting to know your neighbors is like so so valuable um especially when the rent is increasing literally by like high three figures yeah i mean like it's i i do like living in this building this is like the first time i've ever really gotten to know my neighbors um and even without like being like an official um obviously tenant union uh mm. we do have some like things that we do to like take care of each other um like there's like a little memo board on like the f the entry of our building but also mm. uh, we generally have the practice of like delivering packages from like um you know like they always get dropped off in the front uh yeah. we try to like bring them up to whoever's if it's like oh. on the way to your unit because Aww. like they, that shit yeah. gets stolen right oh, like oh that's really nice um, yeah, yeah yeah so stuff like that that's good okay that's good so so next week you know, I could literally just ask you, like, what's the name of one of your neighbors and how's that going? That that would literally be progress. Um, that's cool, yeah. though. Wow, that's yeah. exciting. Yeah, I hope you um, negotiate that rent down because that's that's a huge we already, increase. We already signed the lease, so it's unfortunate. Okay, never but, like, <laughs> <laughs> but like next year, right? Because like, yeah, yeah, next year it was it's just yeah, is it, it, we just we just kind of had to go with it because it was just we didn't want to move and um mm. Uh, it was based on like our neighbors who just moved in, um, what oh. they signed on their lease, right? What were what oh. were the landlords able to get? Um, so yeah, yeah. Um, wait, is your landlord like a big company or just like a person who lives ne nearby? Oh no, it's definitely not. it's definitely like a oh, big okay. person. It's like a it's, big it's not okay, someone yeah. is not someone who um, uh, yeah lives nearby. It's yeah it's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's not we don't like, like them. them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's um, it's like that TikTok you shared with me of that Asian guy, the Asian dad, who you know bought his son oh, a the, Tesla. The son yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, and he owns like a laundry machine or something like that. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a laundry machine inside a twenty-seven unit building that he bought, and he's like so the, the landlord guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Time to write those letters. Wait, that's really cool though. Um, mm -hmm. that that's really exciting. Yeah. Okay. So this week, you know, we have no guest, but um, so what we're doing this time is more of the like Asian political news roundup style episode. You know, there have been a lot of events that have happened since we last had an episode. Um, so we'll just talk about a few of them and that's it. So the first one we have is this thing called the Asian unity march in dc i think formally it was just called unity march but um, yeah. it's, it's mainly for aapi to gather in dc and march um i'll kind of leave it there okay jerry <laughs> what what were your immediate thoughts you know when you saw this what did you love about it what did you not like <laughs> about it <laughs> anything um so i i saw it before like before they marched um and like I didn't really understand what they were trying to do. Um, I don't really, and even now afterwards, like perusing through their website, I don't really understand the purpose and connection <laughs> to the march. Like, what were you trying to mm. march for, I guess? Um, yeah. And then, like, uh, you know, you you said AAPI, but I don't. I was like looking at the organizers. I was like, I don't think there's like a Pacific Islander person. Oh, um, I classic. will. I, I will. I will say they did. They did get like South and Southeast Asians. Okay, like oh, let's yeah. let's not rain entirely on the parade. Yeah, um, yeah. Rain entirely Kala on the march. was there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, I saw. I saw um, Kala give a speech there. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Mm, okay. And then like my last note is this like um. Uh, like like you mentioned, Kala was there. Um, but for the most part, I feel like a lot of like the people, at least on the front page, um, of the website, was like 
the best way to put this is like institution based credibility, if that makes oh, sense. Not yeah. necessarily like or frontline organizers or like yeah. you know what I mean? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh very, yeah. very hot take, Jerry. Hot observation. It's not it's yeah, not yeah. hot. You can't have a hot observation. That's just that's just what I'm seeing. <laughs> that's just what I'm seeing. <laughs> yeah. Spicy eyes. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um What no, did you I, think? Uh, yeah, like when I okay. When they didn't even march yet, I remember a long time ago when we first saw this, and I think you messaged me or I messaged you, and we were like, "Oh, this does not look." I was like, "Okay, <laughs> it's like Asian people trying to replicate the march on Washington that you know MLK mm-hmm. and other black people did." I'm like, "Okay, this is a uh, like okay, I'm a little worried about like too much just like borrowing and you know appropriating." I was a little worried yeah. about that, um, but yeah, I think the main thing is like. I mean, on their website, they I'm I'm scrolling through it right now again. They they do have this entire page called Equity Platform. I think mm-hmm. it looks okay. Like they're asking for like um you know people to pass legislation around like undocumented you know AAPI members, strengthening the right to vote, um protecting workers' rights, culture section, reproductive health care section. Oh right, it happened during the Roe uh, Roe v Wade decision. Um. Yeah, I'd say looking at their website, it looks like they have some clear goals for the march, but like I I think at least at a PR marketing level, I was very also confused about like what we were doing. It felt like just stop Asian hate at a march level, like stop it. You know, stop, don't, you know, stop, <laughs> stop. I'm like this, Yeah. And the the platform makes it a little clearer, but yeah, I think there was definitely a bit of a disconnect on the communication. Um Hmm. yeah uh my other thoughts are just that like i i think it could have been publicized a little better just because all the initial articles are always talking about like oh like this is going to be a huge turnout we're expecting fifteen thousand people to show up and then you look at the actual march and it's like maybe like 200 300 and it's a lot of institutions like you were saying um which you know i yeah it's like you know, um, what am I trying to say? It's like, it's not bad to have institutions, but it's definitely more important to have people who are not part of like nonprofits and other, you know, large, uh, paid protesters. No, yeah, 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 yeah. basically, like organizers that like aren't really committed to radical change as like your mm-hmm. representatives. Um, but yeah, um, Okay, I, I guess- will say there there was a little union representation. I think oh, like that's the, good. The, yeah. the mention of like workers' rights and like I was yeah. looking through like uh, some of the people um, and there I think there's like a couple of unions on their um, their page. So there is mm. that. That's good. Yeah. But not yeah. To, okay. Yeah. Not to be a certified hater. Okay. There was there are good things. <laughs> it. <laughs> it's it's good. I think it's good that it happened overall. Um, it's good that they have a platform, and it's good that they had um, they address a bit of the class element within the Asian diaspora. You know, having workers, workers' rights, class. Uh, yeah. So 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 there are. <laughs> I just don't want to be like a come across a as like a huge hater. It's just, yeah. <laughs> it's just like when um. The the stop Asian hate protests. You remember like when Andrew, I think it was Andrew Yang, right? Or like yeah, Andrew yeah, Yang's Columbus wife? Park. Question mark. Yep. Yes. Yep. I feel like that got way more press coverage than like this. Mm, you know true. what I mean? Yes. As much as I, I mean, it was probably because Andrew Yang was running for mayor at the time, and you know, oh, like the yeah, whole New York City <laughs> mayor. <mayoral>, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm sure uh, if, if he went to this, it probably wouldn't matter. But no, back then, you know, everyone was paying attention to New York City so much. Um, yeah. <laughs> it is day 180 under Eric Adams' reign. I can't yeah. remember what life was like before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh my um, goodness. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I yeah. I think I think it's a start. I'll say that. But trying to be like yeah. you know, the most positive words I can say. It's a start. There were some good elements, um, and hopefully over time it'll shape up to be something more targeted and larger, mm-hmm. yeah, um, and more frequent. You know, so people don't just go to the march and then do nothing for the until the next march. <laughs> A yearly march to D.C. by Asian people, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, um, well. Uh, the next, uh, the next topic on our agenda, uh, well, this one's, this one's, I feel like kind of hard to 
this really is the uh, assassination <laughs> of Shinzo Abe, which like, yes. <laughs> I think I found that out on like Twitter or something. And I was just like, <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> yeah. what does this mean? <laughs> yeah, I'm I could not my... believe it. Yeah, I'm getting my news of political assassination through memes that, that was <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh my god. Yeah. Um uh, I feel like I kind of like half of me kind of just wants to read the funny tweets that we were like sending each other. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> um but I want to say that we do not condone uh, the assassination in any shape or form, but also we're not going to be sad about the death yeah. of a fascist. So yeah. let's just start the segment off with that. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, you know, I feel the same way about Shinzo Abe's death. Um, I imagine that's how I'd feel if Queen Elizabeth died or if Henry Kissinger finally died. Mm. I'm like, okay. Kissinger's like, still I'll- alive? No way. <laughs> I-, I thought Kissinger was still alive. Okay, let me Google this real quick. Henry kissing. <laughs> alive? Age. I'm about Question to find mark? out he's had like three hearts or something. Oh my God, yeah, he's still alive. Yeah, he's 99 he's years 99. old. 99. He's going for the triple digits most likely. But right, yeah, it's, right. I'm just like, uh, my my reaction to his death is more like, Shinzo Abe's death is more like, huh. It's like a, <laughs> it's like a, it's over. It's like a, it's like that kind of feeling. Um, uh, um, okay, I was curious. Well, well, no, first, okay. How did you feel about this? Besides what you said earlier. Dude, I, that's this is how I found out that he was no longer the prime minister. <laughs> oh. Not in like a, he was an assassin. He was assassinated and obviously he was not the prime minister. But like, I... I didn't realize like he had stepped down. I kind of just like had it in my head that he was still in power, which oh, after doing yeah. a lot of research in a way, he still kind of was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 I actually, I only, I remember reading about him stepping down because of health issues, but I mm-hmm. literally do not know the name of the current prime minister in Japan. Oh yeah. Um, same. Yeah. Could not. Okay. Yeah. I was, I, you know, I was more sad about the other Japanese death that happened that day. Oh, the creator of yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh died? I mean, he was only yeah. 60. I was like, that y'all are supposed really to live sad. really long. Like, yeah. what? what is this? Yeah, I would vote for him for prime minister any day. Oh, 100%. Hey, if you're still listening to this podcast right now, thank you for making it this far. Um, just want to do a quick shout out. Uh, sorry, quick plug. <laughs> if you like our podcast... Please take a few seconds on your phone to go to Apple or Spotify and click five stars. That really helps us out. Um, And if you really want to support us, also, you can uh, feel free to donate on Patreon at patreon.com slash politically Asian. We're currently raising money to, you know, provide episode transcriptions, get a video editor and uh, more. All right. Back to the episode. Yeah, I was... No, that death was really depressing. It did make me think a lot about Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I... Okay, I was kind of curious. Did did you talk to any family member, like your mom or dad, about this? Did they have any reactions about it? Um, I'll say, I want to talk to my grandparents about this. Um, I literally talked to my grandma yesterday, but just forgot to mention it. But, like, <laughs> like my grandpa's dad, I think, either fought, you know, in, like, the... Like when Japan and China were were fighting each other, I think yeah. he was involved in that. Um, and then my grandma, like World War Two. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, my yeah, um, my grandpa's dad. I guess my great grandpa. Okay. Um, and then my grandma, she um, I think as part of a result of like Japanese colonization or occupation of China, like she had to learn Japanese in school. So like she knows like the numbers, like Ichi Nisan. I don't know oh, she's not like a that. weeb or anything like that. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I think both of them have had their lives really impacted by Japan mm-hmm. during, you know, during the World War II and slightly after era. So I'm like really curious about what they think. But yeah, I was wondering, um, any family reactions on your side? No, not re- so. My my grandparents pa- uh, on my mom's side passed away recently, so I have no more grandparents oh, on that okay. side. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then my grandma, on my dad's side, is the only one that's like left. <laughs> um, oh, okay. But I, yeah, I I didn't have an opportunity to ask. Um, I think like I I pa- like called my mom. Uh, like I had called my mom the day after, and I was like, mm. oh my gosh, did you hear like the prime former prime minister? And she was like, yeah, like that's really wild. 
anyway here's this new song by bts i was like oh, okay cool <laughs> so I'm, i'm gonna go ahead and say no yeah. um but i also i don't know like i i wouldn't be surprised if like i don't know maybe she, either a she doesn't want to talk about it or b like she just doesn't know because like the philippines was also very heavily impacted by like japan's um you know imperial streak during world war ii yeah so, mm. yeah no, I mean the last time I went to went to China in twenty fall of twenty eighteen, um, every Chinese TV has one channel dedicated to like uh, w- historical dramas between okay. China and Japan. There's always one like there's always one channel dedicated to just, like these, these dramas of like Chinese soldiers fighting Japanese soldiers. So there's <laughs> there's, oh, wow. there's definitely a lot of like I would say anger or resentment or a reminder of that. Yeah, it's like. You know, there's always one, one TV show about like Imperial China, some emperor, some you know, some drama. You know, forty episodes, season, whatever. <laughs> and then there's a similar one, but for World War Two, essentially. Um, Wait, yeah. so to be clear, this is like a soap opera, like a sea drama about yeah. World War Two, specifically yeah. ja- like Japanese impact on China. Yeah, it's, um, I've seen it every That's single time I've intense. gone back. <laughs> there's always one channel. <laughs> It's like always there, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, anything else you want to mention while we're on this topic? I mean, we, you know, we did. We came out with an infographic for um, uh, the new the assassination, um, and mm-hmm. I had to do so much research for for just like all the things that you know. Mm, I, yeah. I didn't even know Shinzo Abe wasn't you know, the prime minister anymore. So that's, that's kind (laughs) of the frame from where we were working with. Um, and some of the stuff is just like really wild to think about. Um, like the fact that his, so he was like part of that, um, (laughs) conservative Akatsuki. Um, but on top of that, 15 out of the 18 cabinet members that he had, like, I feel like if we knew like in Trump's, uh, cabinet was like, of that level you know what i mean like yeah. I, I just that would be so concerning like i don't yeah i don't know um, i was i was also thinking trump and you know this how many parallel it, it yeah they, just, they call them that they call them the trump before trump um, yeah yeah exactly yeah which is yeah. yeah uh not great but um and then the other note that i'll leave with is like not to sound like an american tm um but like a lot of the stuff that i was reading was like uh you know uh shinzo abe wanted to um repeal that constitution or whatever the the thing that they signed after world war ii that was like japan won't have like a military like they won't you know whatever it was like an Uh anti-war clause Uh um but the way they kind of um sneak is a really aggressive word but like Mm -hmm. uh, the way they kind of like go around it is like they they help the u.s with like a lot of like military action and stuff like that Um, especially under the guise of the u.n which is scary um but to me it kind of feels like (laughs) it sounds like they're building up their strength to eventually like uh you know once they get what they want they're gonna cut out of like all the the alliances and like you know like cut it off and stuff like that that's that's just the vibe that i was like getting when oh, i was reading about yeah, like yeah yeah like J- japan 2.0 i guess yeah the, the resurgence yeah no 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 yeah, yeah. yeah um no i mean you i think you know more about this than i do i, I literally <laughs> only read the slides so i will you know i will take your word for this um yeah yeah um I think also also a quick plug at this point. Um, if you haven't watched um, Pachinko, highly recommend on Apple TV. You know, really talks about Japan occupying Korea. You know, which is you know, I, I you and I were both reading a lot of Korean people's takes on Shinzo Abe's assassination. But yeah, yeah. I think that 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 drama really really captures a lot. I'm like, whoa! I had no idea half of this stuff even happened. Yeah, I read the yeah. book, um, which was oh, probably oh, nice. equally depressing. Yes, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's it, just a heads up if you do decide to watch or read it. It is really depressing, um, and mm. I feel like there's there's like many many content warnings on it. But um, mm. I feel like I really learned a lot, like probably the most I ever have about uh, Japanese colonization of Korea. So yeah, mm. Mm. nice, cool. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, I guess it's like another international thing that happened. Um, Sri Lanka uh, 
how I describe this. Basically, since our episode on Sri Lanka with Chinook, uh, which we highly recommend people check out for a 101 on what's going on, yes, they, the people of Sri Lanka basically overtook the prime, um, the president's capital and uh, the prime minister and the president have since ran away, I think resigned by the time we're recording. Um, yeah. But yeah, there were tons of videos online of just, it, it was like January 6th at the White House, but <laughs> not far right wing. <laughs> That's what I was yeah. thinking the entire time. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's so crazy. Like, this is the second time we're watching something like this. But uh, That's a good but, point. But, yeah. Um, how, what were your, like, gut reactions when you heard about this? Um, yeah, no, I was just, like, I was really impressed. Um, I do think, you know, people have to be, like... I don't know if that'll happen, if we'll see that in our lifetime here in the United States. You know what I mean? Um, mm, yeah. I think the most interesting aspect was this TikTok. So I cannot, um, you know, verify the sources. But this this TikTok by at Chronicles of Violence um, noted like uh, military and cops were kind of class conscious and like helped kind of this revolution or at least like I was able to find a couple of articles here and there about like the military not following orders in terms of like um, keep, quote keeping the peace or cops weren't arresting people um, and things like that. So I thought that was really interesting um, because like I've just like um, been on this part of TikTok where like, you know, they talk about like how the law is like an extension of like oppression and blah, 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 blah. So um yeah i thought that was uh, congrats is that the right yeah <laughs> you know right Congra congrats yeah. Sri Lanka. Honestly, <laughs> yeah i mean i kind of wonder if that's partially because even the military and the cops don't have a lot of money right now like mm. it seems like everyone is starving right like you know yeah. it's just like limited food water um gas for heat uh, like all the things that you know we read about before it so i imagine they're also suffering in terms of this which may be why they're united. But yeah, I do agree that it's, it would be really hard for us as non right wing white people to do the same thing in America without probably repercussions because, you know, first cops are paid a lot in America overall. Um, you know, I, I don't know by city, but like overall. And like, so they, they really have an incentive to like protect the capital and government right now. So yeah, I imagine some of us would probably get shot uh, or die or something else so <laughs> yeah you know um yeah it's it's hard to imagine that but um maybe that's part also why it's important to localize uh yeah, why it's important to organize locally with your tenants and other people first <laughs> so eventually that may happen yeah i mean okay you know i will posit this this thought exercise is like, what other option do they have? You know what I mean? Like you, you kind of mentioned like, Oh, well, if we did that, we'd get shot. But like, uh -huh. what is if, if, if you can't afford to feed your family, if you can't afford to keep electricity or the lights, on, like what you're going to die regardless. You know what I mean? Yeah, like what, yeah, what, exactly. what other options do they have? Like, I feel like here they keep us just above water. So yeah, that, like, I don't know. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I think, I feel like if, if we also had similar circumstances as in Sri Lanka, we would probably do that. But I agree, like we're 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 not at that level yet. But like I think we're starting to feel it, right? Like this year was the first year everyone's like, oh, like I've talked to so many people where it's like my rent's increasing by like a thousand dollars sometimes, right? Like I think yeah. it's the start of like where people are feeling that pressure and eventually realize it's like we can't just be polite about this anymore. <laughs> um, we gotta we gotta organize, right? It's like yeah. Um, but I don't, I don't think we're at that level of like mass mobilization or even like smaller mobilization, like just yet. Yeah. Um, and I wonder, like, I wonder why that is. Like, I feel like, um, I hate using the word stratification cause I'm probably using it wrong, but like the idea that like, uh, as I mentioned, like this, you know, keeping, keeping our heads above water just enough, um, and it's like this idea of like looking at another person and being like, oh, well, at least that's not me. You know what I mean? I feel yeah, like in, yeah. I wonder if like in Sri Lanka, like they don't really like everyone's at that same level, you know, or like yeah. more often than not, people are 
relatively within the same level. So like, I just feel like, I don't know. I, I worry that like, that's the case here is like, um, it might be a while before people all realize that we're all in the same boat, yeah, not same no, boat, yeah, but you know I, what I mean. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think, um, like to keep using that rent example, right? Like, I think more people are realizing they're in the same boat now that everyone's sort of getting all these rent increases. Um, but I think I do think like you know it, it seems like in Sri Lanka's case, there's more of like a class unity to it because very few people, it seems like, except for the president and the prime minister are like living large so i think mm -hmm. that really helps out but like um yeah class unity seems a little bit harder here in america yeah I, I i was like thinking about this the other day and like you know like how like in uh a lot of like asian american groups or really any discourse um it's always like this concept of like success right success success mm -hmm. gotta gotta do it so my parents are proud or like it's all worth it um and i feel like this is the year that like with inflation rates, you know, like people might finally understand that like you, there's no concept of success, right? Like they, they're just going to move the goalposts. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, like I hope, I don't know. I hope we stop looking for that goalpost and then just start looking at each other instead. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have the tiger. You have no goalposts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, and you want to bring up the last topic? Yeah, and our final story on our news docket, um, surprise, surprise, um, Elon Musk backed out of the $44, uh, $44 billion Twitter deal, and uh, Twitter is suing them, um, or suing him, and uh, yeah, the, Twitter suspects that the, he's like backing out because he's like a little broke since Tesla stock <laughs> is kind of down. Um, I don't feel like, I don't know, like, I feel like as... Twitter's not super mad about not being owned by Elon Musk, but that's just me. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I'm mainly glad because I do feel like um, based on all the news articles that were out initially, it did seem like if Elon, okay, yeah, if Elon bought Twitter, it would slowly turn more right wing and mm -hmm. uh you know give platforms to people who are like more right leaning and right wing and so i'm mainly glad about it from that aspect yeah that's fair i i feel like i'm i'm trying to think like if a lot of does political discourse still happen on twitter it does right <laughs> yeah i think it does yeah yeah or like um like there's some pretty big you know political twitter accounts who are just like you know calling out elon or trump or um, Ken, what's his name? Ken Klippenstein. Oh yes, yeah. He's yeah. a reporter for the Intercept. I think he does really good work. Like right now, he's investigating how um, a lot of Secret Service deleted their text messages on January sixth, and some of Ooh. them might be like Donald Trump supporters. Oh my god! And, <laughs> and at least one of like the one of his um, staffers, his like high staff members for Trump, used to work for Secret Service. So yeah, Ken's really doing like good work, and also um, Lauren. Lauren Cowrie Gurley, um, she's yeah, the one yeah. who covers. Advice. Yeah, well, now, yeah. now at Washington Post, and she always covers the Amazon strikes and the oh, yes. Starbucks strikes. So yeah, I think there is like some pretty good content out there for now on Twitter. Be honest, did you think like he, they were actually going to go through with it? I was going to say no, just because I think Elon has a pretty strong track record of saying very, you know, big visions and then not following through. Mm, okay. Yeah. yeah. What okay. about you? Um. Yeah, I didn't think it was gonna happen. Uh, primarily for the same reasons. Um. Yeah, I mean, like he he has like a track record of not doing that and just like yeah. saying like farting out his mouth and just yeah. doing whatever. Um. The other half of me and like perhaps this is a bad thought to follow, but. Uh, you know, do you remember when like the weird part of the pandemic when like everyone's like, oh my God, TikTok's going to be like banned from the app store, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. And then nothing happened. I um, nothing happened yet. <laughs> I, I like not even like, like Microsoft was in talks to buy them to like protect it oh, or whatever. Oh yeah. I forgot yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah. Um, and, and none of it, like literally none of, nothing happened. Yeah. Um, yeah. I kind of felt the same way. I was like, no, nothing's going to happen to Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. They'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, wow. I'm glad you brought that up. I completely forgot that happened like at all. Um, 
the whole 2020 21 era of you know tiktok being massive security risk everyone delete it you know ban it from the app store oh my uh, god wow yeah yeah i completely forgot about that um well <laughs> that's true you know you speaking of like journalists i i think it was taylor lawrence um uh-huh. she she did like a piece i think i'm pretty sure it was her she did a piece about uh how that that incident where like oh tiktok is like a massive security you know whatever um was like a uh an operation yeah an operation like funded by like facebook oh <laughs> it just did like yeah. a like a tech operation not yeah, like a like, psyop like, kind of thing like fa- no like facebook like paid people to like insert this narrative of like oh tiktok's like oh, a security oh shit a yeah shit talk? And, oh right shit. because like think think about like if you're on instagram these days like think about how many like videos get fucking shoved in your face it's because like yeah they're trying to copy tiktok because they're just like damn like yeah. what are they doing like what do they have that we don't yeah. um you know so wow you know, to, to tie it back to earlier, that's um, certified hater behavior. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Number one hater behavior. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> but also kind of sounds like fan behavior because you're copying like, yeah. the whole TikTok, like FYP thing. But what, yeah. whatever. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad the deal did not go through. But I guess we'll see because now there's like a very long lawsuit that's going to happen. So we'll, we'll see. He'll <sighs> be fine. He'll be fine. Yeah. He'll <laughs> be fine. It'll okay, be the, fine. the funniest thing about Elon not doing work, I think, is his tunnel project, like the boring company. Like, you know, he, he has dug like a tunnel oh, the underground. No, no, no. Bo- the boring company is like the one where he like digs underground. To, like Oh, think, like connect. literally boring, like the yeah. other meaning of the word. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I exactly. didn't know they did like, that. Boring. Yeah, it's basically like the highway, but underground is like a tunnel. So it's literally just tunnels connecting. And people are like, oh, this is going to speed up traffic. But then there's so many videos online of people going in the tunnel and there's also just a traffic jam there. <laughs> That's so funny whenever I see it. Um, the they, like reducing... Is it like a highway? A highway in the tunnel or? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's supposed to be like a, a highway, like a high speed um, transit path. And right now people drive in it, but in the initial videos, it was like the car would latch onto a platform and slide through really quickly. But it's just really funny that like the you know the the vision and reality is just so it's so it's so funny to me. So disconnected. Yes. So not good. Well, well, okay. I think okay. This is a good timing because we're at forty two minutes right now. So that's actually really good. Um, but those were all the news episodes we had. Um, so yeah, at this point, I'd say you know if you're still listening, you know thank you for listening. If you want to support us please give us five stars on apple or spotify um and you know also just check out our social media twitter instagram um and if you have any suggestions feel free to reach out over there or email at politically asian podcast at gmail.com all right well uh we'll see you next week with a new episode um take care stay warm uh all right bye, bye. I like that you said stay warm and it's summer. Yeah, stay warm. Yeah.